How does instant serverless GraphQL backend sound to you? Good? Well, then you should check out GraphBase. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev back with a new tutorial and today we're checking out GraphQL API and not just any kind of GraphQL, we're checking out GraphBase. GraphBase is sponsoring this video and GraphBase offers instant serverless GraphQL APIs that you can create in like seconds. And we're gonna see this today, how it works because you really just need one local schema configuration. Uh, actually, you don't need any kind of configuration. You just need that schema file. You you connect it to GitHub, you deploy it to GraphBase and you get an instant GraphQL API that you can use in any kind of application. If you've never heard about GraphBase, well, then it's finally time to check it out. GraphBase.com, they actually got 7.3 million funding in 2022. So it is one of the contestants we have to take very, very seriously. So we've seen other platforms for SQL, NoSQL, but GraphBase takes a different approach and then it offers an instant GraphQL API, which is a bit different from traditional REST APIs. We're going to see this once we get to the coding part in this tutorial. But overall, GraphQL makes it easy to query just the right data or mutate the right data on the server. And we're going to implement this in an Ionic React application. The Ionic part is not too important, but it pretty much works with everything. It works with React, Swells, Next, View. There are tons of great templates available on the GraphBase page. So go check it out. Create an account for free because you can get started with two projects in a hobby plan for free. And now let's dive into GraphBase. All right, let's check out GraphBase and see how quickly we can come up with our own GraphQL API. So from schema to API in seconds, uh, this is the type of schema that we have to write and this is what we automatically get from GraphBase. And as far as I know, we can use the CLI to simply initialize a new project. So I'm gonna do this within Visual Studio Code, npx GraphBase init. And this should, first of all, generate a new folder GraphBase here. So if you um, notice that there are a lot of other folders already, yes, I'm doing this in an Ionic React application, simply so we can have something to test later. Um, but you could also do this in a completely empty folder, no problem about it. Now what we get is one file, a schema.graphql, which describes our GraphQL API. And to load that schema, let's navigate into that folder and then run npx graphbase.dev, no, of course not dot, and this will immediately bring up a playground and the endpoint. So this is the endpoint we can target to make queries or mutations. This is the playground, which is pretty, pretty cool. So we're gonna check out this playground in a second. Let's let's just run this first query. Yeah, it immediately runs data. This is so cool. Um, so within that playground, there is a schema and documentation where we can see everything that was generated based on our code. So maybe we can do this side by side and check it out. So I'm gonna close this. So by default, we have a type to-do list model, which has an ID, a title, and an array of to-dos. And we can have a bunch of these um, different types for our GraphBase API. For example, we can now change this um, and say that this title always has um, a specific length. So we can use data validation just like this. So for example, let's say a title should definitely have a min length of four and the max length of 255. Uh, in different fields, you could also add something like unique to make sure that like an email of user is unique and you can create all of this. And once you hit save, the schema change will be detected and your um, Graph API, GraphQL API will simply reload thanks to the API. So for my example, I came up with this, like a to-do list has a title, which should be definitely defined and an array of to-dos. And then every to-do has a title, notes, and is probably complete, yes or no. Of course, you can check out all the other uh, fields and directives and the different scalas that are available within GraphBase. So we're just using the default ID, string bool, but there are many more like date, date time, um, email, also super interesting, timestamp, URL, and a lot of other scalas. Also, the data validation is what we used with add unique or add length. You can easily add this, hit save, and your playground will update. Now, you can run all the queries within that playground and what is the data saved? Yeah, I asked myself this. So there's a new .graphbase folder and within there's a data SQLite file. So 
if you inspect that file, you're going to probably find all of your data that you stored. But so far, we actually haven't stored any data. So let's try out the playground to probably add a new to do list. Uh, we can add a new tab if we want to. And we can now pick simply from our schema um, the right query. So we got the mutations to do create to do to do list create. This is pretty cool. All of these mutations are automatically generated based on the schema file that we define. Really, it's just this one file. Uh, you see actually quite a lot of types and uh, code defined already in here that you don't have to write. Now, if we wanted to create a new to do list, we could run a mutation to do list create just like this. And it should probably create a list and return the ID and the title of that new list. Likewise, we can now go back to our to do list collection with queries the collection. And we should now get back our first collection just like this. And just like that, you can use Prettyfy to Prettyfy the calls. Uh, you can check out the history and uh, popular calls that you can use or use new tabs. If you don't like the playground, no problem. You could also just use a testing tool like Insomnia plug in the URL to your GraphQL API just like this, and then you can run all the queries. So let's say this is the ID of our to-do list. I want to plug this into a call to uh, get a specific to-do list by ID. So I'm going to change my query variable here. And then I get back an empty list because I haven't added any to-dos yet. Now playing around with just with the playground is probably a bit boring and you want to see this in the real application. So I came up with a little Ionic React application. You can find the link to the GitHub repository below this video. We're not going to do the full coding because that's going to be quite boring. You can just check out the code if you're interested in this. I just want to show you how fast we can actually connect to our GraphBase API. So this could also be just a plain React application. Ionic is pretty much just the UI framework. So we get a little UI just like this. So I'm going to do this side by side now. Uh, we connect with our GraphBase API URL and we're using the Apollo client to do this. And really, it's just those, I don't know, three, four, eight, ten, whatever kind of lines. Yeah, just nine lines. I could also condense this. That we need to connect with an HTTP link to Apollo, uh, to our GraphQL API at localhost. Remember, we're still running our graph base with the CLI all the time. And then I've wrapped the application with the Apollo client. And then our home page and on the uh, to-do list page, there are a few queries, like a query for the to-do list, uh, which we've already seen in the playground or how to create a mutation using the GraphQL and then just using the use query hook or the use mutation hook. So let's try this out. Uh, let's call this my new list. I'm going to create the list and when we notice it, the new list doesn't appear immediately. I would have to refresh that page now and then it would appear. So to overcome this, we could change our mutation here from Apollo and we could have uh, another field refresh queries and within we would put in the query for the to do list. So this would be one solution and that means if I now add a new list, uh, Simon one, this would automatically in the background refetch the query using Apollo. However, there's another convenient way to do this, and that is actually using live queries. Yes, we can easily use live queries with, um, uh, with GraphBase as well. All we have to do to make live queries work is change how we create our Apollo connection in the first place. So now we do have a little split logic here, which automatically checks the queries for GraphQL if there's a live field inside. And then it will use server send events link uh, instead of plain HTTP link. Really, that's the only change I made in here. And on the homepage, we don't need to refresh this anymore. But what we can do is now go to our query for load list and just say add live. That's the only thing we need. Now, I don't have any refetch queries in here anymore. And now this is live. I can create this list and I immediately get this list. So this making live queries work is just like it takes not even a minute. Within the list, we can, of course, add cool tasks and you can find all the code on GitHub 
To make that work, we just write a few queries. This is standard GraphQL mutations, um, making sure that we link the task to a list. And then we can, of course, also delete a task or mark it as done. Another cool feature about GraphBase is using authentication. And you can easily add this to your schema file. For example, if I go into my schema and now add another authentication block using the JWT provider, which is pretty much the most common way um, to use any kind of authentication today, we can easily add this. What you're going to notice in here, if I format this correctly, is um, there is an issuer and a secret, and it's actually using these kind of strings, which is a template uh, placeholder which means it is actually loading those values from your environment file. So don't uh, don't be scared. This is not part of our front end anyway. This will be deployed to GraphBase. Um, and we can just create a new .env file right here and put in like uh, devtactic.com and the, some kind of secret. Of course, make sure you're using a better JWT secret than I do. And then this with the specific rule to allow only private calls would make that everything in our database is now secure. However, if we deploy this or if we just hit save, which then uh, redeploys this, um, we would get a problem because this is locally with a CLI and it's not using authentication. So to use the authentication, we actually have to move this to a hosted GraphQL API with GraphBase. And we're going to do this in a second. I just want to quickly show you that to change this, we need to include a JWT token in how we uh, in the headers of our Apollo links here. So now we have an authorization field for both of the links, which is generated at this point right now. Again, you can find the link in the tutorial, written tutorial below the video where I'm going to find more information about this. Of course, this is just a dummy way of creating a JWT and I just added it in here, but this would work. So let's see how we can deploy this to GraphBase. To actually deploy your GraphQL API with GraphBase, you have to create a new project in your GraphBase account and connect or import the repository from GitHub. So let's quickly do this for our app. Um, because I've been using an Ionic app, I do already have a repository. I'm currently have committed everything and added all files. So using the GitHub CLI, I can now easily create a repository. I'm just going to call this GraphBase video app. I'm going to make it private using the current folder and the remote upstream. And once I got this, I can simply push all my current code, git push dash u upstream main. And then we should have a new repository right here uh, that you should or that I can check out because this is the private repository. Uh, you won't have access to it. But again, find all the code below this video. Now, with that repository hopefully in place, let's see. Um, I should be able to get a new repository imported. Um, let's see, I can connect here. Yeah, previously I only gave the permission for those two. So let's change this. I'm going to add uh, the permission to this new repository. So let's search for GraphBase video app. I'm going to change my permissions and then, uh, yeah, that should work. Um, and so, yes, there we go. GraphBase video app. This is the one I just created. Let's hit import and it will automatically find my schema here with all the definitions for the GraphQL API that we've written. So I'm going to hit deploy, but most likely we're going to encounter a problem now. And the problem is that we actually use environment variables in our uh, schema file. And if I remember correctly at this moment right now, yes, the deployment foils, but we do get a nice look, uh, undefined variable issuer URL. So that means right now our app is not yet deployed and we can fix this within the settings, going to API keys, uh, no, going to environment variables and simply putting in the same stuff we had previously here in our environment. So issuer URL would be this here. And JWT secret would be this. And now I'm going to hit create and we've created the environment variables for our GraphQL API. Now, in order to redeploy the API, uh, let's just make a commit to our repository. In the future, there will be a way to simply redeploy with a click. For now, I'm just going to make uh, some kind of change in here. I, I could do uh, whatever kind of change in here and then just run git commit dash 
uh, change git push and just with that i'm able to trigger a new deployment here and actually we should see this pretty soon yeah deployment is almost immediately in progress now this already gives me the endpoint to the hosted graphql and i can actually use this in my application now and because we created it quite nicely uh, we can just replace the graphql api url in here i'm gonna run ionic surf once again and this should, with a bit of luck, connect to our API here. So let's see. Um, there we go. Let's try and create a live list. And by the way, if this is not working immediately, um, because you're unauthorized, that is most likely a challenging problem. Um, if it's not working immediately, I would recommend that you go to your graph-based project and check out your deployed branch and then go to playground. And if you see a loading skeleton here, which I had a few times before, it means your API is not yet ready. So that is an easy uh, fix for um, like if the app is still loading, then you just have to wait like a few minutes. In our case, it looks like we are unauthorized for whatever reason. Um, I'm just gonna create a new token with my cool code here and see if we probably have to use a new token because my token expired. Um, or probably because I had an invalid token. Oh, I just noticed that I should add Bira in front of that token. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Now, if I do have the right token, that was actually a perfect test. I, it didn't, ex uh, <laughs> that was not my intention. <laughs> uh, now it works. Uh, <laughs> that was really not my intention, but it really works now. And I can add tasks to my GraphQL API. And once again, to confirm that this is really using the uh, GraphQL API, let's see and go to the playground here of our project. I'm gonna run this query and we're gonna see I get back data. So this is now not using my local API, this is using the deployed GraphBase API. And we've been able to deploy this really quickly. We just played around a lot with our local code up front, but going from local to a deployed GraphBase GraphQL API just took us like two minutes. It was really just a GitHub repository and pushing this to GraphBase and then you can play around with it. One more thing that I want to mention is that you could now actually create branches in your GitHub project. You could easily have a branch with some kind of feature and push it and within GraphBase you would see that branch appear here and it is gets its own URL and you can test against that branch. So that means you could have multiple environments and test graph base in a different uh, setting. And it's just another way of um, getting like the benefit of this great instant uh, serverless <laughs> GraphQL API with GraphBase. All right, that's it for our quick demo of GraphBase and the instant serverless GraphQL API that you can create with just a minimum schema file for your API. I think this is almost unheard of and quite too easy actually to do, but I hope you enjoyed this preview. Go check it out, graphbase.com. You can find links below this video and of course also the GitHub repository with all the React code, how you can use Apollo to connect to the GraphQL API and the logic to generate a JWT, all linked below this video, as well as the written version of this video in case you want more explanation on the code. One more thing that you should note, GraphBase is very, very early and very young. So there are a lot of features planned like connecting your own APIs in the background and aggregating the data or searching through your data. And you can find all of these features on the roadmap, what they already got in terms of the CLI that you can locally use to spin up your GraphQL uh, backend and everything in terms of branching of your GraphBase project is pretty amazing, but there are many more things planned. So go check it out, graphbase.com. If you want to support them and if you want to support me and the channel, give it a try and create your own instant serverless GraphQL API in minutes.